God that would be visible walking the earth. He was an image of Jesus Christ. Are you working with me? Which is the image of God. Are you working with me? Okay, so now Adam, Adam now becomes the image and likeness or likeness of God, which is Jesus Christ. I need you to remember that. I need you to put a pin in that because we need to really understand the mind of God here. We need to really see the mind of God. We know we, uh, there's been so much preaching and yelling and screaming in the church. We need to slow it down, take our time, and let's teach the word of God so that when we leave the church, we'll have some knowledge. Is that right? Amen. God is not about all the theatrics. Amen. Let's, 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 let's just hear what he's saying. Amen. Let's hear. Let's hear. Glory to God. And so now Jesus, uh, Jesus is the, is the image of God that Adam was produced after. Now, what's the difference in the two? Because being the likeness and not the, uh, being the image himself, but being in the likeness of that image, Adam, what was the difference in the first Adam and the second Adam? Okay, what the scripture says in 1 Corinthians 15, that the first Adam was what? Living soul, a, natu uh, a natural man of the earth, earthy. The, the second Adam was who? He was, he, was a, he was the Lord from heaven. Is that right? Glory to God. And he was spiritual. Howbeit that was not first, which is, which is spiritual, but that which is natural. Now let's go right there. Let's go to that scripture. When that scripture says, in 1 Corinthians, and for the benefit of those who don't know where it is, go to 1 Corinthians 15. <clears throat> uh, Pastor, uh, read um, the 46th verse. 1 Corinthians 15 and 4 to 6. Mm -hmm. How be it that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. Okay, now, I just said that, Jesus, that Adam was the image of Christ, mm -hmm. right? The image of God, which is the image of Christ. Christ Jesus, rather, is the image of God. Is that right? Amen. Now, so it sounds like if when I say Jesus was first, when I say Jesus was first, and then came Adam, it sounds like a total contradiction to this scripture, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Because yeah. this scripture reads, how be it, that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterwards that which is spiritual, mm -hmm. right? It sounds like a contradiction. Mm -hmm. If you don't know how to rightly divide the word, okay. it would be a contradiction. This scripture is dealing inside of time. Okay? So what, is, what it is saying to us is that Adam was manifested before Jesus mm -hmm. in the earth realm. Yeah. He was the first one to be manifested. And then afterwards, Jesus was manifested. In other words, the natural man was manifested first. And then afterward, the spiritual man, Jesus Christ, was manifested. So that which was natural was actually manifested in the earth realm or in time. It was manifested in, in, our, in time, the, this, this dispensation that we call time. Mm -hmm. The natural man was manifested first and then the spiritual man. But as it relates to, as it relates to eternity, Jesus was first. Mm -hmm. Come on, are you hearing God? Amen. Jesus was first. Jesus was manifested first and then afterwards, amen, or uh, before, uh, I'm sorry, afterwards, inside of time, the natural man was manifested. Are you working with me? Mm -hmm. So the scripture does not contradict itself because you have so many scriptures where Jesus said he was, he was, he was uh, before Abraham and all the rest of them. Amen. And he, he, he determined that he was with his father 
hello, before the world was. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. But he wasn't manifested until man had been on the planet over 4,000 years. That's when he was manifested. Are you working with me? Amen. <clears throat> All right. Now, look at this. He is the image of the invisible God. That's what this verse says. This verse is so inclusive, all inclusive, especially the second part of where it says he's the firstborn of every creature. I could preach on that all day. Amen. But even the image of the invisible God, amen, look at 1 John 1. 1 John 1 and 1. We, we often go there. We often go there, but let's go there now. 1 John 1 and 1. Mm-hmm. That which was from the beginning. That which was from when? The beginning. Uh-huh. Which we have heard, mm -hmm. which we have seen with our eyes, mm -hmm. which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. Okay, now, listen to John here. John, you know, John was just awesome in his revelation of Christ. And, and God put everybody in their little slots. You know, he gave everybody... He gave everybody, all his, his disciples, uh, uh, their own little slots to, to, to operate in. And John, John operated in this place where he saw Jesus in eternity. Paul had a great revelation of him in the church. But John saw him in eternity. He saw the eternal nature of of, of Jesus Christ. He saw him through eternity. That's why he said, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. And the Word was made flesh. He's coming from the Godhead all the way to the, to the, um, to the barn. He bringing God from the throne and putting him in the swaddling clothes. The Word, he took, the, he took that third person of the, God, of the Godhead, that person out of the Godhead, and put him in swaddling clothes in a manger in a barn somewhere in Bethlehem. Are you hearing? Mm -hmm. John was the one that could see that. You know, they call Ezekiel the eagle eye prophet or one of those, those guys, but I, I think John got eyes was greater than the eagle. He's, praise the Lord. That, that man could see. God gifted him to see eternity. Glory to God. And through his eyes, we're able to see. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. He said, now we handle the word of life. Mm -hmm. Notice what he says here. We handle the word of life. We handle it. We actually didn't, and notice, notice, notice how he, he places this here. He says, we looked upon it, and our hands have handled, our eyes have seen, our hands have handled the word of life. He's saying that this Jesus, this man that you call Jesus, we know him as the word of God. Because even in his gospel, John said it was the word that was made flesh. Mm -hmm. So now he's continuing along that line and saying that we entertain the word of God. Oh, Lord Jesus, help me, Father. Because where we going now, you better fasten your seatbelts. Amen. <laughs> fasten your seatbelts because we about to take off. <laughs> Y'all going to say, Doc, going crazy. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Watch this now. This, it was just so magnificent just listening to God, just listening to him when he was talking to us about this. Kareem and I were just, we were just really having ourselves a ball. Amen. And, and Kareem, you can get your microphone, you know, if you want to, if you just want to jump in, you know. <laughs> you, 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 you got the privilege today to just, just come and say what you want to say, baby, because we need to understand this. All of us need to understand this. Amen. So y'all give my baby a microphone in case he wants, in case God speak to him. Amen. Glory to God. Now, now, this word of life, this word of life, I want you to see this. When, he, when John says, we handle the word of life, he's relating back to the Godhead. Mm -hmm. He's relating, he's, he's identifying Jesus as the word of God. Amen. He's identifying Jesus as the word of God. Now, I want you to think upon the nature of man or the 
makeup of man. We learned in Hebrews, the fourth chapter, 12th verse, that man is a threefold being. Again, we're seeing the, the image of God. Man is threefold, right? He's body, soul, and spirit, right? Hello? Body, soul, and spirit. Now, what, when we look at body, soul, and spirit, when we look upon one another or when we <clears throat> interact with, with each other, or when we interact on planet Earth in general, when we entertain the, the animals, when we entertain our homes, when we entertain nice things, even bad things, and when we entertain each other, we're expressing ourselves, right? So what is it that we're expressing? What part of us are we expressing in that body, soul, and spirit? What part is actually being expressed? Hello? Okay, so man was a living soul and God. God, what made him living soul? This is review. No, 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 no. What made him a living soul? He was given what? A body. He was given a body to do what? Express himself. So his soul was what needed to be expressed. So man is really a soul. Come on. Man is really a soul that has a body to express his soul with. Are you, are you working with God? He has, he's a soul that needs a body in order to express itself. Are you hearing God? Hello. So now if we look at the soul of man. Is, 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 it not, is it not the soul that God looks at to determine whether we are good or evil? Hello. I remember the scripture saying it's not what, what, um, what goes in a man that defiles him, but what comes out of him. And, and I remember another scripture that says, out of the mouth flows the issues of life. Amen. And so if our heart is evil, if, the, if evil is in our heart, it's expressed through our mouth. Is that right? And through our deeds. Is that right? Praise the Lord. So the soul is expressed through our deeds and through our sayings, through the things we say, through the things we do. We're expressing ourselves through our bodies. Is that right? If I want to express love, if I want to express benevolence, a hug is an expression of that. A kind word is an expression of how I feel about you. So where is that coming from? That's coming from within my heart, which is synonymous with soul. Is that right? Glory to God. So it's safe to say, because it's true, that the, the body is, is, was given to man to express himself. To enjoy planet earth and to be an expression, to, to, to be able to interact with one another, to express ourselves. Oh, no. Praise you, Jesus. Is that right? Amen. Amen. So now, all right, if that be the case, if that be true, if the body is indeed uh, an expression, now let's, let's think about God. You know, the Bible says we are, we are made after his image, so let's look at him. He's a, he's a triune being. Is that right? He's body. Is he body? What is the body of God? What body did he take? He took on flesh, right? Which in the form of Jesus Christ, right? But I want us to look at this Father, Word, Holy Ghost. That's the Godhead. That's what John said at three to bear record in heaven, Father, Word, Holy Ghost, and these three are one, glory to God. Now, so if we look at Father, Word, Holy Ghost, which one of those is an expression of who God is? Hello? I don't hear you. So the Word of God expresses God. Is that right? So when God makes a statement way back in the old covenant, when he says things like, my soul abhors you, or my soul takes no pleasure in you, God got a soul? 
Hello? I mean, he the one said it. Now, I, I didn't say that. He said it. He said his soul. Back in the old covenant. Hello? Somebody can find those scriptures. You know, y'all scholars, y'all look up stuff all the time. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. But God made statement that his soul, you know, delights in or his soul abhors. Glory to God. So he's, he's letting us know that he has a soul. So if he is a triune being like us or we're like him, then his soul is expressed where? Where, where will we see his soul at? Where? The word. Is that the, is that, is that the only way you know God is through his word? Is that right? Now watch this. Watch God. Now I want us to see this. This is the only point I want to make today because I want us to, I just want us to be happy about knowing God's mind. Can we just be happy about knowing his mind? Here's this God. I want you to see God. Amen. What he's thinking and how he's thinking. Glory to God. I want you to see his personality. Here's a God in the old covenant. He's he coming down on Mount Sinai. When he comes down on Mount Sinai, the mountain starts quaking, smoke coming up off the mountain. Glory to God. It's lightning and it's thundering. Amen. And, and he says, nobody touch this mountain because I'm holy. Nobody touches this mountain. If, a, if an animal touch it, kill him. Amen. Nobody touch it because I'm so holy. And then when Moses brought all those people to that mountain, and, and he, they told him, Moses, you go ask him this and that, and da, da, da. And, and when Moses inquired of God and God started talking, the people said, tell him that's all right. Hush, hush. Praise God. Because when God started talking, the ground started shaking. Glory to God. The people were scared. They said, that's all right, Moses. Tell him he can, he can be quiet. Just shh. You have to say, no, we got the message. We got the message. Hallelujah. I'm talking about a God that was so awesome. Hallelujah. Until when Moses, his, his, the man that he said, the most humblest man that ever lived, when he said, I, I just want to see you. And God, this God said, you can't look at me and live. No man can look upon me, Moses, and live. Glory to God. So where you, where you coming with that? You can't, can't live. Glory to God. And Moses said, but you God, you know, you can do anything. Let me see you. If I die, bring me back. Praise you, Jesus. You know, that's Moses. Moses knew how to get to God. He knew, he knew how to get to him. And God just put him in the cleft of the mountain and moved around the mountain. He covered him with his hand. He covered him. He overshadowed Moses. Amen. Put a shadow over him. And God moved around, and Moses just glimpsed his back parts. Just glimpsed. Just glimpsed. And he turned white as she just turned white. Glory to God. So bright until folks couldn't look at him. They had to put a thing over him. This is the God. This was the God of Israel. This was a God that was so awesome until, how can you touch him? You know, I, 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 I saw a movie a long time ago. I maybe I don't know where I was supposed to watch it. Maybe you shouldn't watch it. I don't know. Maybe you, don't y'all watch it. Pray you remember, the, remember the Matrix? Not the, not the Matrix. The X-Men. You know the X-Men people? Those mutants? There was a, little, there was a girl in the, in the mutant, one of these girls. She had long black hair. Some of y'all saw it. Y'all know y'all saw it. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. And her, one, she was a mutant, but her thing was she couldn't touch anybody because if she touched people, if she touched people, they would, they would die. They would, she was so powerful inside or something, they'd burn up or do something. They just died. And so she couldn't have a relationship with anybody. She couldn't, she couldn't hug her friends, you know, or hug her parents or anything. She couldn't have a boyfriend because if she, if she expressed any emotions and, and, and interacted with them, Glory to God, they just die. Hello? That's how God was. God couldn't interact with man. He couldn't interact with man. He said, you can't even look at me and live. Hallelujah. But this God was a lonely God. You know, it's something else to be love. You're the definition of love, but you have nobody to love you. You love everybody, but nobody loves you. This God wanted people to love him. He wanted people to know him. So what did he do? Now, I'm, I'm going to get you to know me. How am I going to get you to know me? I'm going to send my word to you. So what does he do? He sends a spirit of wisdom, a spirit of knowledge. 
He sends it and let that spirit overshadow the prophets. And the prophets begin to speak the word of God. A glory to God, the anointing of God will come upon them and they will speak the word of God. What is he doing? He's trying to, he's introducing you to who he is. He's sending his word to tell you who he is. Glory to God. If you, if you just listen to my word, that tells you my mind. You know, and the prophets, they, they, they tried they tried so hard to articulate this God. They kept saying, he, 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 he's holy. He's holy. He's holy. He's holy. And then he, then they, they just wasn't getting it. They just wasn't getting it. So then God, God, watch this now. God, God did this. God, God gave them the law. Remember the law? Hello. And in those laws, those Levitical laws, they had all these divers washings and and ceremonies and all of those things to 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 express the holiness of God trying to express how holy he was. So his word, the word of the prophets, the word of the prophets was trying to introduce mankind to who God was, introduce his mind, his heart. This is how he thinks. Glory to God. He told Saul, go down there and kill all of the Amalekites. Were they the Am Amalekites or the, or the Malachites? Who were they? The Amalekites? He told them to go down there and kill all the Malachites, so even the children, even the, the women that's pregnant, even those that give suck. Now, this is, this is God. And then, and then uh, of course, Saul didn't, didn't obey him, and he, and, and, and he brought the king back, and he, and he brought the animals back. God told him to kill all the animals. Kill the animals, too, and kill the one that's giving suck. Kill everything. Glory to God. And God wanted to wipe out the seed. Now, what, why would he do that? He's telling, he's trying to show them this is who I am. This is how I think. I deal with seed. I deal with seed. He's trying to introduce you, to, was trying to introduce them to the concept that he deals with the seed of man. In other words, glory to God, Adam is your daddy. And your daddy sold you out. Hello. He's the one sold you out. And when I look upon you, amen, I see Adam. And the only people I, glory to God, are uh, somewhat exempt are the people that I chose. He chose Israel. He chose Israel, even though they were just as wicked, probably even more so. He chose them for some reason. He just chose them. Amen. He chose them. I think God chose these wicked, hard-headed, stiff-necked, rebellious people because, amen, I think that he wanted to show how powerful his love really is, you know, because where sin abound, grace does much more abound. Amen? But God now chose these people, and, and, and all you saw was, was his power. You saw how powerful he was. What was he doing? With the prophets, he was trying to tell you, he's trying to show you now, he's trying to show you how, how he thinks, you know, he, with the prophets, the word of the prophets. I'm trying to show you how I think and how I feel. And then also, during the age of the prophets, he showed his power. He showed him how powerful he was. Is that right? He showed him how powerful he was. Good God Almighty. Amen. This is a good Christmas message here. Amen. He tried to show him how powerful he was. Amen. But then, but then now, glory to God, they like, okay. All right. See, man always got his own thing. He got his, he got that old seed. They had, man had that seed of, of the devil in him. And and I don't care how much God showed these people. He went, they, he, he, now watch him now. This is God because here he is in the Old Testament trying to make these people understand who he is. Trying to make them see how powerful he is. Make a covenant with Abraham. But then he tells Abraham after he makes the covenant with Abraham, he says, your seed is going to be um, uh, captives, slaves in a land that is not their own for 400 years. So why you put the people in slavery for 40 years? 400 years. He put the people in slavery for 400 years. How come he do that? He wait 400 years. Then he sends Moses, one of them. Send Moses to get them out. Now, now Moses, now, now watch this God. This, this, see, he's trying to show you who he is through his word and his power. That's what he was trying to do. He's trying to show mankind, this is how I think. This is how I feel. Watch me now. He said, now watch me now. So he goes and he sends Moses down. Now you think about this. Think about how powerful this God is. Moses, 
Moses walks into the, he's been gone, he's been gone for 40 years. First Pharaoh is dead. His son, Ramesses, took over. Now, here, here Ramesses II, he took take over. And then now, Moses comes back down. Ramesses knew Moses because they grew up together. Now, Moses walks into the temple, walks into the palace, and said, let God's people go. Now, are you talking to Pharaoh? First of all, you're a murderer that's on the run. You're a fugitive. And you walk into the palace of Pharaoh and tell him to obey a God he don't know nothing about. And you walk out alive. That shows you, what is God doing? He's trying to show you his power. He's what was he doing there? I got power over this man. I don't care nothing about him being Pharaoh. He can't do anything that I don't let him do. Come on, are you hearing this? Then Moses goes back in there, glory to God, and tell him, let him go, or we're going to turn, we turn all the water in Egypt to blood. And he's standing right there and turn the water to blood and walk out alive. Pharaoh, watch him turn the water to blood. And he walks out alive. He come back. He say, well, I tell you what, you don't turn him loose. God's going to send locusts and he's going to send frogs and all of these pestilence. So, now watch this now. Watch this. The first five plagues, everything Moses did, the others, the, 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 uh, Janus and uh, Jambres was able to duplicate. They were able to do just what Moses did. He turned, he turned water to blood. They turned water to blood, you know, whatever he was doing. And so the first six plague, Moses come in there and said, I tell you what, now y'all do this. He said, every plague God brings going to affect nobody but you. It's not going to have any effect on the Israelites. Not one Hebrew cow is going to die. Not one Hebrew field is going to fail or whatever. No matter what he brings, it's not going to affect them. Now watch, this is God now trying to show his power. He's trying to show his power and his mind, how he feel about the heathen. And Moses is still alive. They can't even kill the man. They can't even kill him. He walks in and walks out. Walks in and walks out. Don't you know? I think probably if I had been fair, I'd have killed him the time he got there. Glory to God. Probably, you know, most, most kings would have killed him. Amen. But that just show you, glory to God, God is saying the same thing to Pharaoh that he, saying, that he said to Nebuchadnezzar. Glory to God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Hello. God rules in the kingdom of men. That's, what he was, that's the point that he was trying to make. I rule in your kingdom. You don't rule. You just do what I let you do. Are you hearing God? So now, here's a God that you can't see. The people, here he is. He's chosen these, these, these Jews to be his people, but they've never seen him. They've never seen him. Glory to God. And now he's talking through his servant Moses. He's showing all kind of powers. He did ten plagues down there. Send the death angel, tell him, say, now just put some blood over your door of the, of the, of the lamb, and death going to pass over you. Now, they, they saw this happen. They saw all 10 of these plagues. As soon as they get to Mount Sinai, while Moses is up there getting the law, they make them a calf to worship a calf. So now here, what is God saying? What, what do I have to do? I mean, my goodness, I have shown these people my, my power, my awesome power. I've, I've parted the Red Sea for them. I killed their enemies for them. Glory to God, what do, is it that I got? Now, as soon as they get out of trouble, they build them another God. What was it? Why did they build a God? Because they wanted a God they could see. They wanted a God that they could look upon, that they could touch, that they could handle. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's what they wanted. He said, let's, let's make this God. Let's bow down to him. At least we can look at him. We can see him. Forget the fact that he doesn't have any power and he can't do nothing. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. But they wanted a God they could see. Then when they get, they, 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 they go, oh, Lord. They get down there and, and, and 
and you know, even after they go into the, the promised land, God, Joshua took them over into the promised land and Joshua being a judge, God set up the judges to rule. Amen. Then they say, well, we want a king. We want somebody we can see that tell us what to do. They, the, the king was a, hello. But God said, I'm your king. Insulted God. He said, but I'm your king. They still wanted somebody they could see. They wanted a ruler they could see. Are you, are you hearing God? Hmm? And God, hallelujah, hallelujah. They didn't realize that it was the plan. God had a plan. God had a plan. God already had it in the plan to become visible. I got my time picked. And, and, and you know what he did? He promised them that from the very Garden of Eden. He promised the woman. He promised Eve. He said, your seed shall bruise the head of the serpent, and the serpent shall bruise his heel. He was prophesying of Jesus Christ. The prophecy came to Abraham. Abraham was promised a righteous seed. He was promised the spirit of God would come in a Messiah, good God about it, that the Messiah would come. See, because the, the, the people knew that the Messiah was the Son of God, that if the Messiah come, he would be the Son of God. There would be none more powerful than him. And that's why they could not believe that Jesus was the Messiah because he came in a barn, born in a barn, and born under questionable circumstances. Hello. But it wasn't no question. The Bible said he would be born of a virgin. Come on, somebody. Amen. So now, here's God fulfilling this visibility. He's becoming visible. Jesus was his method, his way of being visible to his people. So he came down. That's why Jesus said, hello. I came to declare God. Woo-wee. The words that I speak, hey, it's not me, guys, it's him. My father is working and I do work. What you see is my father doing the work. My father is raising the dead. My father is healing the sick. My father is opening blind eyes. My father is the one that's got this body walking on water. Oh, come on, somebody. This is that invisible God that you've been waiting to see. Are you, are you here? Hayamasa. He's here now. He's here. And Jesus said to the, to the Pharisees, he said, except you believe that I'm he, you're going to die in your sins. Glory to God. You got to believe that I'm the one. He said, if you don't believe me because I say so, believe me for my work's sake. Because you know, even one of you came in, me in the middle of the night and told me, you know that no one could do these works except God be with him. Well, if God be with him, where is he? Where is this God that is with me? He is in me and I am in him. <coughs> Are you hearing him? So this invisible God has made himself visible. Hallelujah. Made himself visible in the personage of Jesus Christ. He says, I am here now. I am here. Woo if you look in, let's, let's, let's go to old school. If you, if you look in, um, 1 Corinthians. We were in 1 Corinthians 15, wasn't we? Look at, look, at, look at this 49th verse. Look at, no, look at 48 and 49. Ah, yeah, 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 47. 47, 48, and 49. Read that, Pastor. 1 Corinthians 15, mm -hmm. verse 47. The first man is of the earth, Earthy. Mm -hmm. The second man is the Lord from heaven. 
as is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy, and as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. Okay, now wait a minute. Those who are after Adam, they just like him. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Those who are after Adam, they're just like Adam. Those who are after the heavenly, they're just like the heavenly. Mm -hmm. Hello. Are you seeing this? Mm -hmm. Notice what the, now before you go to, you remember the 15th verse? Colossians 1.15, what's the last phrase that that verse says? Because we're coming right back here to Corinthians. What does it say? The firstborn of what? Every. Of every creature. Who is the creature? Who are the creatures? The church. Are we not the creatures? Are we not new creatures? Yeah. Glory to God. And Jesus is the firstborn yeah. of every yeah. creature? Mm -hmm. That means that he has the preeminence. Right. He is the prototype. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Every new creature was created after him. Yeah. Does this not say that as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly? Yeah. Are we heavenly or are we earthy? Heavenly. Come on, are we heavenly or are we earthy? Heavenly. We are heavenly beings living in an earthen body. Yeah. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. Come on, somebody. Yeah. But even though we got this treasure in earthen vessels, the excellency of power that's moving through us is of God. Come on, why is it of God? Because it's God that's living in these earthen vessels. Oh, my God. So where are we? We are the souls that have been hidden in the Holy Ghost. Our life is hidden in Christ with God. Why say with God? Watch this. Our life is hidden in Christ with God. Why does it say with God? Why does it say? Because it never changed. Jesus' soul never changed. Jesus' soul was in God from the beginning. And now that it's in us, his soul is still in God, but we're in him. We're in him, and he's in God. Oh, come on, somebody. Are you hearing me? Let me show you what God said to me. God said, and maybe some of you will understand this better than I do. God said, he said, um, he said, remember Abraham? Paid tithes to Melchizedek. Remember that? Hello? And, but the scripture says that he, when he paid tithes to Melchizedek, he paid tithes for Levi. And Levi was his what, great-grandson or somebody? Amen, hadn't even been born? But where was he? He was where? He was in him. Woo! He was in him. Even though he had not yet been manifested he had not yet come forth but he was in his loins just as we are in Christ we were in Christ before the foundation of the world we were birthed God needed Christ to birth us we were begotten by God through Jesus Christ it was through him that we became who we are hallelujah are you hearing God so just as we are in Christ, Christ is in God. So our life is hidden with Christ who is in God. Are you working with me? And guess where, guess where you at now? Guess where that, that Christ that's in God is? He's in us. He's in us. Because in us dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead, what? Bodily. The whole Godhead is in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now if the word, if this is what God is trying to say, God is saying, if you want to, if you want to talk about my soul, glory to God, if you want to talk about that part of me that, 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 that gives expression, it's my soul. My soul is the word of God. My soul is my word. That's where you see me at, in my word, in my word. But my word needs, it needs expression. Because you ain't, you ain't getting it. You're not getting it. You're not getting it. You're not getting it. When I send my word to my prophets, you're not getting it. When I, when I write it in the, in, the, in the what you call zodiac signs, amen, I, amen, I call the story of, of creation written in the heavens. I have written my whole story in the heavens that you've perverted and called Leo the lion and all that foolishness. Glory to God. Amen. Instead of the, the, the line of the tribe of Judah. 
Praise you, Jesus. Come on. Are y'all hearing God? Amen. Amen. He says, I, he said, you're not getting it. He said, you ought to know that, I'm, that, that I exist by the things that you can see. Glory to God. These things that you can see were made by somebody you can't see. Are you, are you working with me? You ought to understand, amen, by now, my, if you just read my word in the old covenant, you ought, to, you ought to be able to see, amen, because it's a schoolmaster to teach you my mind, my heart. Glory to God. I, but if you're not getting it, you still don't get it, okay, so I'm coming. I'm going to come down from heaven. I'm going to get myself in this body that I had created before the foundation of the world. I already chose an image that I like. Glory to God, and I'm going to step into that and manifest myself. Glory to God. Now, when you entertain Jesus, Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So when you look upon this Jesus, when you look upon this Jesus, you have seen God. When you, when you, when you listen to him, you've heard God. When you look at the things he do, you've seen the deeds of God, the power of God. Hallelujah. This is, this is now the presence of God in the earth, this Jesus. But, but he's the first. He's the firstborn of every creature. Hallelujah. 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 So as he is, so are we. So, so this God is saying, woo-wee. He's saying the purpose of salvation. Hallelujah. What is the church? The church is a holy habitation for me to dwell in. Hallelujah. I'm going to be in every one of you that accept my son. I'm going to live inside of those bodies. So even though Jesus... I chose that body. I chose that body to dwell in. Now I'm choosing your body and 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 your body, your body, your body. I'm I'm choosing. I chose you. You didn't choose me. I chose you. Glory to God. And your body. I'm in your body. I'm in your body. I'm in your body. I'm in all of these bodies now. And guess what? I can interact with my people. Glory to God. I can I can use I can use this body to embrace that body over there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm visible now. Glory to God. The mountain is not quaking. Hallelujah. My voice is not roaring so until you're so afraid to approach me. You can approach me now. You can handle me. Glory to God. That's what God is saying our purpose is, saints. Glory to God. God is saying our purpose is to allow him to be able to interact with his people. He said, you let me love my people through your body. Don't you rob me of that. Glory to God. Don't you usurp authority over this flesh. Glory to God, because you're in it and I gave you the stewardship of it. Glory to God. You stay in agreement with me. Let me love through you. I want to interact with my people. I want to be able to touch my people. I want to be able to talk with my people. Glory to God. God, hallelujah. I couldn't do that in the old covenant. Oh, y'all don't hear God. I couldn't do that because they couldn't handle me, they couldn't handle me talking to them. They, could, they were too afraid. They were afraid if I approached them. They couldn't even approach me. But I'm in you now. I'm in you. I'm approachable now. So when my people entertain you, they're entertaining me. That's what the scripture means when it says, from henceforth, see no man. After the flesh. Don't look upon this flesh and think you're dealing with Sam or Glenn. You're dealing with God. That's why he said don't lie to one another. Did not Peter ask Sapphire and Ananias, why did you lie to the Holy Ghost? They thought they were talking to Peter. Come on. God is saying, don't, don't rob me. Don't take, don't take away from me the ability to approach my people, to love my people. To, to speak to my people, to enjoy my people. I want to walk among my people. That's why I am in them. I am in you, and I am in them. And the church is my holy habitation. Hallelujah. 
That's why I dwell now. Oh, and this right here, this, yes, 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 this is temporary, this is temporary, this body you in is temporary. Glory to God. It's temporary. The reason it's temporary, the reason you're in this body that you're in now, Adam's old body, you know, you're in Adam's old body, and I know you get tired of it because it, it gets tired, it gets sick, it gets worn out. Glory to God. He said, but I, I told you you got another one coming. You got another one coming. He said, but I need you to be in these so that you can relate to those who don't know me yet. You, see, because if I take you out of these now and leave you on the earth, you're no longer kinsman to them. This is the only thing that makes you kin to the human race is this flesh. And as long as you're a kinsman, it's lawful for you to bring them into through redemption. Come on, are you hearing God? Are you hearing God? Hallelujah. So he's saying, glory to God. Let me be God in you. Let me live through you. That's all I'm asking you. All you need to do is be humble. Walk in humility. Humble yourself. Submit to my will. Whatever it is I want to do through you, you let me do that. Now, this is why he said, I will lead and I will guide you. I will lead and I will guide. You don't have to think about anything. Just follow my lead. Just follow my lead. Just follow my lead. Saints, I'm going to say this again. <clears throat> I think the greatest thing that God has ever said to me was that relieved me of all the frustration when he said, you stand here, and all these things out here that affect you, and all these trials and all these things that seem to be closing in, I control them all. I control them all. You just, you just do what I tell you to do. Stand still and see my salvation. Just do what I say. Come on, somebody. That's what he said. Just do what I say do. Glory to God. God has come down. And in us is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. The whole Godhead is living in you. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. What God wants from us this year coming is to allow him to live through you. Allow him to love through you. Allow him, allow his life to be seen through you. Just let God live. Let him live. It's not what you want, but what he wants. Whatever his desires, let it be done. Hello? Whatever his desires, you let that be done. Hallelujah. Nothing, nothing you're going through, nothing that threatens because at the time, there were some things that were threatening when God spoke to me. Threatening, deadlines, and all of that kinds of stuff. God said, I'm in control of that. He said, I control it. Don't you fret? He said, because if you fret, if you worry, you can't change not one cubic, not one statue. You can't change anything. I'm in control. Nothing can happen that I have not ordained. Nothing. Let me tell you something, saints. Stand this year. Stand up for God. Just stand up for God. Stand up for the God that's in you. Let him do what he want to do. Regardless of who got a problem with it. Because people are going to have a problem with it. But you stand up and let God be God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You stand up and you, see, and you let God do what it is he want to do through you. And I guarantee he'll bless you. He'll bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Somebody say, I am, I am. the presence of God in the earth. Clap your hands and tell him thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Are we blessed this morning? Are we blessed? I am the presence of God in the earth. I am the presence of God in the earth. The power that operates through me is of God. Not of myself, but of God. Jesus continuously said, he said, I can do nothing of myself, but the Father works through me. We have to have that same conviction. We can do nothing. It is the Father. There's a whole nother year approaching. We live to see this Christmas. I pray we live to see another. If Jesus doesn't delay his coming, if Jesus delays his coming, I hope we live to see another Christmas. But if you feel that you've betrayed God in any way, any way, shape, form, or fashion, just stand where you are and let us pray for you. If you feel you need to repent, just stand where you are and we'll pray. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you feel that I have not allowed God to live through me, I haven't allowed him to just live through me. But I'm going to make a change. I'm going to make a change. I'm going to make a change this year. I'm not going to have this issue. Did we understand the message today? I'm not going to have this issue anymore. I'm going to allow God to live through me. Regardless of what it takes, I'm going to allow this God to live through me. Pastor Kareem, I want you to come and pray for us. If we failed in any way, I, amen. I want to be included in this prayer. I praise you, Jesus. I don't want to be presumptuous. Hallelujah. Father, we just honor you, Lord God. Yes, Jesus. We thank you and we praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. You see, all of us here that are standing, Lord God, that has a heart, Lord God, to change Hi, for I you, see. Lord God. But you from the foundations of the world saw this day, Lord God, and still chose us, God. Yes. Father, we just praise you first, Lord God. We honor you and we yes, thank you Lord. because we feel your mercy reaching yes, out Lord. to us, yes. Lord God. We feel your, your grace pulling us toward yourself, Lord God. Hallelujah. Your scripture says it's by your loving kindness you have drawn us, Lord God. Hallelujah. And every time we step through these doors, we feel your love and kindness drawing us, Lord God. We feel your word changing us, Lord God. We feel ourselves being conformed to the image of Christ Jesus. And Father, we thank you for that, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We praise you, Lord God. And Father, we don't want to walk in pride, Lord God, and not humble ourselves, Lord God, where you call for repentance, Lord God. Father, we have examined our lives and we've seen where we have not been in right standing, Lord God. We've seen that sometimes we just miss the mark, Lord God, that our souls desire something that is not of you, Lord God. But I pray today, Lord God, by the Holy Spirit that you will wash us, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Cleanse us, Lord God. Clean our slate, Lord God. Give us another opportunity to manifest yourself, Lord God, in this earth, Lord God. Father, even we want to see your glory, Lord God. Hallelujah. We want to see your power to keep this flesh holy, to keep our souls holy, Lord God. We want to witness your power, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. We ask that you reveal yourselves unto us first, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Cause us to know the power of our salvation. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, we just pray, Lord God, that you clean us, clean us, clean us, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Wash us, Lord God. Let us be spotless, Lord God. Hallelujah. And we pray for another chance, Lord God. 
Hallelujah, Lord God. And now, Lord God, we, we are going to be single-eyed, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. We don't want to treat repentance as a sacrifice, Lord God. Where every minute we're offering, 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 Lord God. But let this repentance be true, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God, that we'll stand sure, Lord God, because we love you, Lord God. That when temptation come, we'll say, no, I love the Father. Hallelujah. And I've witnessed him in my life and I cannot betray him like that. Hallelujah, Lord God. Father, we just pray for strength, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Strengthen us, Lord God, with the spirit of might in the inner man, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Cause our thoughts to be as yours, Lord God. Hallelujah, because truly you are not caught up with situations and circumstances, but you are God, Lord God. And Father, your scripture says, as a man thinketh, so is he, Lord God. So Father, I pray, Lord God, that you just be with us, Lord God. Father, we don't want to miss you in this season, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God, we do not want to miss you, Lord God, because we see you on the move, Lord God. And so, Father, we pray, Lord God, that you help us, Lord God. Just help us, Lord God. Wherever it is, Lord God, wherever you see spot, Lord God, cleanse, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, so, so that we as a body, Lord God, can see your intent from the foundation of the world. We'll see a church all spotless and holy and presentable unto you, Lord God. We want to see it, Lord God. We want to see your scriptures fulfilled, Lord God. We want to see a church unified, Lord God. So unify us first, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Where there be unforgiveness among us, Lord God. Tear it down, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Soften our hearts to your word, Lord God. Hallelujah. Let us not exalt ourselves in pride, Lord God. But be humble, Lord God. And lowly, Lord God. So that your spirit can manifest through us, Lord God. Father, we just acknowledge you, Lord God, in this place. Hallelujah. We thank you for your love. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. It's by your love, Lord God, that we're here, Lord God. It's by your love that we feel the strength to go again, Lord God. We feel your love in this place. And we just honor you, Lord God. Hallelujah. And Father, we just ask, Lord God, that you try this resolve, Lord God. Hallelujah. We want to show you that this is true, Lord God. That our heart's decision is true, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Give us an opportunity to manifest you, Lord God. Hallelujah. And Father, we just bless you, Lord God. We bless you, Lord God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. To, to be saved is so sweet to be saved I've got Jesus down in my heart and is so Jesus.
one is so sweet is so sweet to be saved oh yes it is it is so sweet to be saved that takes over, I would like to have a meeting with, um, um, who I'm supposed to have a meeting with? I'm supposed to have a meeting with some people. Praise you, Jesus. <laughs> we want to th say thank you for those of you that have tuned in to Sunday Morning Live. I hope that you have enjoyed it. Praise the Lord. I hope that you have learned something this, this morning. And I pray that you have met God right where you are. I pray that he has visited you. I pray that this word has been broken down, amen, to where you can understand it. And we're going to continue with the book of Colossians until we're finished. As you can see, we only did one verse today. <laughs> so we don't know when we'll finish it. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. However, God is still good. He's good and he is leading and guiding us those of you that are watching us by way of television, those of you that are online, those of you, amen, wherever you are, this is Dr. Banks and all of the BTI family saying, we'll see you next time. You got my list? <laughs> <laughs>